What is going on everyone and welcome to another episode of Toy Shop Fab and on this video, well, we're going to continue to put lipstick on a pig. That pig. Nah, I'm just kidding. This is no pig. This ain't no pig. <laughs> this is my 1959 GMC pickup truck for those of you that are new. Me and my son Seth put a big block 454 in this thing as well as a 4L80E transmission. We pulled out of our 2003 parts truck that is over there. I've uh, been goofing around on it. Last video I did with this truck, I took the factory fuel tank out, threw a bunch of hardware down it, shook it around a bit, knocked out. Uh, Got as much of the loose rust and junk that was in that tank out. Got everything cleaned up. Got the floor sprayed with some rattle can bed liner there. Got our fuel cell, our fuel tank reinstalled back in the truck. Got everything hooked back up. Fuel pump sounded much, much better. It was able to pick up fuel from our tank. Got it to our rebuilt carburetor here. Truck fires up. As a matter of fact, should. Let's see here. Saying it hasn't had an issue since we've done that. Go ahead and turn our little switches on. Yep, fuel pump's clicking. Fire dried up. We're cold outside. Everything works. So, for the short time that I am home this time, we're going to try to knock out a decent little video here. And what I mean by decent little video is, well, this is our co-pilot side fender up on the front. And as you can see, there is a lot of surface rust, a lot of scale up inside here. And, as you, and we got this guy right here. This is the factory, what's left of our factory fender support. And you can see it's gone, pretty much gone. Got a big old patch panel in here. This looks like someone cut off the side of a filing cabinet. Got her kind of, well, that's brazed. So they got it brazed into place. That's what it looks like there. Does not look like a weld. So there's another welder guy up here. He's got a bunch of little fingers just hanging out. Some more of our filing cabinet there to kind of patch up some of these holes. But I'm not fixing any of that. We're going to leave it. I am, however, going to hit most of this with a wire wheel to knock all that scale and stuff off. I am going to hit this with a wire wheel as well, knock most of that scaly, loose rust out of there. And then I have got this round stock here. Now, it's not, what I'm going to do is cut a piece of this out. We're going to bend it in the shape to where it fits right up inside this lip here, get it welded into place and kind of reinforce that part of the fender a little bit more, give it a little bit more strength as it's up against the door. That way it doesn't sit there and rattle and stuff. Um, I'll keep a lookout for other fenders, but chances are I'm not going to buy them. We're just, I, I want to leave most of the original sheet metal on this truck. So we're going to clean it up. I'm going to hit it with a wire wheel, clean it up. Once it's all, all the loose stuff is out of the way, and I get in there, I got some of this Permatex rust treatment, just shake it up, spray it all up inside that fender there on the rust. It destroys rust on contact. It helps cattle. It just, not exactly sure what it does, but it stops it. It's supposed to stop it. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to spray this all up in there, stop what we can, at least slow it down. Once it is dry, and you'll know it's dry because all the rust usually turns black. I have got some rubberized undercoating. We're going to spray up in there as well. Sound deaden it a little bit. Make it look pretty. <laughs> uh, and then throw that on the truck. I want to do the same to both fenders, hopefully. Get both of them wire wheeled, cleaned up, and back on this truck. Because I'm only here for a couple of days. That's right. I am still at work. Um, so do what I can when I'm at home. 
keep these projects going. So, but let's get you in the stand. Let's get a wire wheel in my hand and let's get the cleaning that fender up. And bam, just like that, our 59 GMC Fender is now 100% completely rust free. <laughs> no, it's not, but it has a lot less rust on it. And that's what I was shooting for. So took our wire wheel, got all of the heavy flaky rust off. Everything that was just gonna fall off anyways when it was hit with like high air pressure. Got all that knocked off. Used my old toothbrush here. That's right. Use that to get up inside these uh, headlight pockets here where the drill wouldn't fit. Use that to knock off all of the freak, flaky old rust as well. All of the scale and stuff. Just make it a little bit of a better surface, a little more prepped, I should, I would say, for our rust repair in a can. Now, if you're wondering where to get this, I got this at O'Reilly's. It's about 12 bucks a can. I want to say 12, 12, 13 dollars a can. But shake it up. As you guys can see there, it destroys rust on contact. So, shake it up, spray it on there, let it dry. Now, you'll know it's dry because the rust should turn black. At least it has in the past with everything else I've used, and hopefully nothing has changed. So, But, like I said, I'm going to get you guys back in the stand. I'm going to go ahead and hit this with an air blower, get all of the excess and everything out from all of these little work or these rust holes i should say all the little crevices underneath there out from behind our headlight bucket and around underneath here get everything i can blown out use a little wire brush as well try to knock some other loose stuff off once that's all knocked loose go ahead and hit it with a coat of this stuff let it dry once it is dry then we're going to go ahead and hit it with some undercoating and I'll get everything pretty much all coated up except for this area right here. I'm going to leave this section alone for right now because I want to get back in the shop here. Take some measurements with our little round bar here. Clean this up just a little bit better maybe. That way we can get that little bar bent. Get it welded up in here to give our fender a little more strength. I mean this old filing cabinet will probably do just fine but just in case. We're going to give it just that little bit more attention. Now, I understand this thing here, it's pretty rusted up, but I don't want to change the sheet metal. I want to leave most of the metal on this truck, you know, because it has a story. It's neat. I like the way this thing looks. So, we're just going to do what we can, strengthen it up. But, anyways, enough chit chat, enough jabbering, right? Get you guys back in the stand, hit that thing with an air blower. Get all of the crevices cleaned up, and let's get our rust repair and a can sprayed on so we can get the undercoat in this thing. All right, got the inside of our fenders all blown out with a little wire brush. Got all the loose rust and stuff left that was left in there. Got all that blown out. Went ahead and coated it with our rust converter as well show you guys what that looks like so i got about two or three mild coats on this as that's what it says and then you let it set up you can see some of the spots are starting to dry up where it's turning our rust more of a, a blacker color you see here it's a little might might spray a little bit more on that but you can see here it's starting to turn black there where it's drying up it's a lot blacker as well as in there versus that red color it was like you see right there so it's like somebody missed a spot. But we'll go ahead and give that a little bit more. 
And a can says two to three good mild coats on it. Let it sit for 24 hours. That way it has time to convert all the rust over to where it's no longer eating itself or eating the fender, I should say. So we're going to let that sit about as long as I can let it sit, which should be about tomorrow sometime. But while we're doing that, I went ahead and cut a piece of our quarter inch bar out, hit, got inside here with a flap disc, cleaned out some rust, gave me some shiny metal to weld to, went ahead and cleaned off this as well, and got her, as you can see, kind of snapped into place with our little, our little vice grips. And what I'll do is I'll grab the welder and put a tack weld on each side or zap it, take these off and just move it up, putting a weld right next to it, making sure to get this clamped down tight, as tight as I can to the middle to give that uh, fender edge as much strength as we possibly can. You know, that way it's not flapping in the wind. So get you guys in the stand. I'm going to get this thing welded up and I'll be right back. All right, our quarter inch round bar is welded to the inside of the fender. Like I said, just clamped it down with our vice grips, put a tack weld on each side, which pretty much ended up being about an inch, inch and a half separation per, uh, between each weld. Show you guys what that looks like. So there is our bar, as you can see, pretty healthy little weld on each side of where the vice grips would have clamped it down. And that should be plenty strong enough to keep a shape in that part of the fender, at least keep it from bouncing or vibrating around. You stand back there, we got a pretty good little arch. Now it might not be the correct arch to the truck, but it is pretty close to where the fender was already. And if we need to, because all it is, is that little bar, we get up on the truck and we can massage it in a little bit. And we'll do that tomorrow. Once all of this stuff here is, or once all of our rust converter is done drying, I'm gonna let it sit overnight. Let it dry up about as much as possible. Hit it with some undercoating in the morning. Get these things on the truck. Get them bolted in. But before that, you see I got a tap on the end of my drill. And that's because I am running across each one of these guys here where the factory bolts would have been. And just running these in and out. Make sure all of our threads are clean. Now I have done this to a few of these already. Now I'm just going over every one of them to double check, make sure all of them are clean and ready to go. That way I'm not fighting anything when I get this bolted to our inner fenders. And I have a bunch of new hardware sitting over there. So, like I said, I'm going to go ahead, run through both these fenders real quick, make sure all of our bolt holes or our bolt locations are cleaned out, ready for new hardware. Be back in the morning, give these things a good healthy coat of undercoating, get them on the truck, and uh, well, we're going to start fitting, see how they fit our door. So, see you guys in the morning. Good morning. As you can see, it is, it's snowing, and it says it's like two degrees outside, maybe a little warmer, but it's snowing, it's cold. <laughs> Uh, but I've only got a few days here at home and I really, really want to get something done. I want to get the fenders hung on this truck. Um, I got a little ahead of myself last night and got our pilot side fender undercoated and installed on the truck. Now, when I installed this fender, it had a couple of issues. Some of you guys might remember when I first took the front clip off this thing that I had to cut this fender off the truck. They welded it to the cowl and they welded the fender to the inner uh, pillar. And I had to take a cutoff wheel and cut the backside of this fender off. If you don't or haven't seen that video, it was completely welded all the way up here, all the way across. And if you come down here, it was welded from about, I wanna say like right in here, 
all the way down where it's kind of it's a little mangled but this fender was welded to this truck and well i'm kind of trying to start to figure out why somewhere in its life this door kind of got folded or something happened where it hit the door the, the door came open it got folded smashed the fender because the inner support of the fender was not attached to the skin i mean what was left of it most of it's rotted away it had a it had backbone to it still but some of it was rotted and it had been pulled away from the skin where it kind of folds over i'll show you on our fender we have right here so it has this skin right here and of course you got the support the fender comes and folds over well this whole piece what was left on the other fender was pushed in and pulled away from that lip uh, i did manage to get a hammer i smacked it all back into place and as i was installing it the door didn't fit quite right and that's because the door skin isn't completely attached to the door shell in here either this door shell was kind of crunched Let's see if i can get in here and show you that as well door is i mean it's there so but if you look up inside let's see here here we go so you can see right here where the shell has been pushed in and the skin isn't quite attached to the door it's got a couple of spot welds in there i did see where they had welded the skin back to what's left of this and the bottom of the door was kind of crunched but when they welded and zip or uh tacked the skin and all that got the front of the door back in place it does open and shut pretty good it lines up fairly decent for what it is everything still clears the fender got no issue and that's fine all that is definitely going to add to the character of this truck and main reason i got really ahead of myself last night is because i'm i want to see this truck with all its sheet metal back on it and so you can see it's just going to look really cool the fenders and the everything's just going to complete the look of this truck so getting excited to get the co-pilot side on but before i put undercoating on it i want to kind of show you guys what the converter did to this fender last night you can see here it's still got a little bit of redness to it that's all right i'm assuming maybe the temperature had something to do with it or there's probably a little bit more dirt than there is rust i'm not i mean it's that can happen <laughs> uh, but if you get down close you can see all of the black splotches here where it is converting the rust so this is where i just hit it real quick with another light coat this morning but you can see all of the black in here all across in here where it is converting the rest so it is doing what it said it's going to be supposed to do also went ahead and just gave that a quick spray this morning as well we're going to get some undercoating on that get some undercoating on this guy here get it attached to the truck with some new mounting hardware grade eight of course that way it just strips threads and not snap uh, but before we get on the truck like i said i got some dupe color here rubberized undercoating pick this up at o'reilly's i think these are like i don't know i want to say seven eight bucks a can close um yeah because they're close you can usually get some undercoating a lot cheaper at walmart so keep that in mind but go ahead and uh Get some undercoating on that fender real quick. So I'll be right back. Ah, well, inner fender's been sprayed, or the inside of the fender has been hit with some undercoating, and uh, can't seem to figure out why. It's not dry. <laughs> oh, but got the inside inside of our fender sprayed with some undercoating. Got the valance, the front valance, or grill support uh, sprayed with undercoating as well. Been sitting out here for a while trying to get it to tack up and um, it just does not seem to want to cooperate with me. 
I don't think it was meant to be sprayed in this cold of weather, but regardless, it's on. It's on there. It isn't coming off. So let's get this fender hung in place, kind of see how it fits, how it looks. Now, I did go ahead, too. I also went ahead and uh, sprayed some of our rust conversion in all the areas where the metal is going to pinch metal, like where I put my grill support up front here, where it's going to bolt to the fenders because that's what ties the two fenders together. That's got some of that rust conversion in it as well. Um, so that should be pretty good. But whew. Anyways, like I said, let's get this thing hung. Hopefully you can hear me. I got my little torpedo heater. Full blast. Trying to uh, warm this up a little bit because it is cold. So I'm going to go ahead and just start off with getting this set up into place right here. I got my bolts, which I should have grabbed right here. Ah. So fender gets bolted up using a half inch up here. Oh, there we go. That just went right in. That's nice. Of course, I did go through the whole fender last night, if you remember, and ran a tap through all of these bolt holes. That way, I didn't have to fight nothing. Okay, so that's on. That's on. Fender is hanging. Let's see if I get this up in here. Here we go. Maybe if I got this guy up here, grab my little, grab my little socket. Pilot side fender is pretty well. It's bolted up tight. I didn't want it rattling around. This one, I'm just going to put some hardware in here, let it hang for a little bit. That way we can get our support up front get the two fenders tied together there there it goes all right so got that sitting up there that guy's sitting there so cool these holes line up where they're supposed to so that's good uh, fender is up against the door doesn't really want to fit oh yeah there it goes <sighs> gotta pull it forward a little no big deal not a big deal like i said it's loose in here still i got room up front uh door could probably go back a little bit as well there she goes Fender is on, all of the hardware is in place. I put our front grill support or our valance, fascia, whatever you want to call it. It's sitting in there right now. It's tightened up against the fenders. Kind of needed it to bring both of the fenders together. It really helps with how it lines up with the door itself because of the way it, if it falls in, it kind of bows the center of the door out or that gap next to the door it kind of bows that edge of the fender out so i put the valance in there it brought that back to where it's supposed to go and uh it is really really neat looking at this truck seeing the fenders back on it seeing the hood on it seeing the valance on it all right done teasing here's what it looks like so there is our fender i am going to wash this truck i'm going to get that blue off i want to try to keep most of the yellow and the green and that blue well it's kind of sticks out a little it's not part of the truck neither is that red but we'll get to that part of the whole truck later and uh, look who i found <laughs> wandering around in the snow uh but see here is our fender here's how it fits and then here is our gap right here you can see how it lines up with our door and you remember this is the one we welded this quarter inch bar in all the way down it did not fit that great when i first put it on i just had to smack it a couple times with a hammer to kind of get that curve right where it's supposed to be so and it didn't really take a bunch of wax you can see just how it fits 
this door does have to come out a little bit. It is a little far in, but for the most part, it fits. The truck is looking pretty darn good with all of its sheet metal up front. Still got to do lights, still got to do the grill. Got to tighten that front valance up, but really, really cool to have the sheet metal back on this truck. It was, you probably seen in some other videos out there, it was sitting up against an old fridge I had out there, an old dryer and stuff. Just out collecting, you know, um, letting Mother Nature continue to paint it is what it was doing. So I decided it's done. Time to bring it in, put it on the truck. So, but it is looking really, really cool. As a matter of fact, I'm going to hop in this truck. Let's get it outside, see what it looks like. All right, got her out in the way. Definitely, definitely digging the look of this old pickup truck. I like the patina on it. I like all the rusted sheet metal and the different colors it's got going everywhere. Definitely get a kick out of Seth's three inch exhaust. Sounds pretty good. Got a nice little rumble. Carburetor's working out great. Uh, uh, definitely excited. Can't wait to get the grill in here, get the headlights in, start getting some of the wiring done so we can actually get this thing out on the street and do a real good test drive. You know, uh, gotta get the. <laughs> Gotta get some back brakes too. But, uh, really, I really like how this thing idles. It's got a nice little look to it. For those of you that are new, if you are new, make sure you go back a few videos. Right? I'm gonna try to remember to put the link to that in the description as well. But that that carburetor, I want to give that carburetor to one of you guys out there. So that's it's this truck's not staying carbureted. I got my old fuel injection up in there, it's gonna go on it. But I wanted to no one wins this car, bear. She's going to sit on a shelf. So I want you guys to win it. Go back, watch that video. Like I said, I'll put a link in the description. Give that away. Got some new float bowls for that car, bear. If you remember, if you watched that rebuild video, those float bowls weren't the greatest. They've got stripped hole screws too long, kind of leaked a little bit. So I got new float bowl bolts with seals and brand new Holly float bowls. So factory or bullion replacements, whatever you want to call them. Got those for that carburetor as well, so she should be sealed up pretty good. Got new gaskets for it. Almost ready, so we got new grace paint, new food bowls. Like I said, go back, watch that video. All right, make sure you like it, because I want to give it to one of you guys. It's doing pretty good out here in five degree weather. But let's see, one more walk around. That just look like a big old mouth on that thing. So, definitely going to be a cool little ride going down the street in this thing. <sighs> now I got to pull this thing back in. We're going to start shutting things down. Got another little storm coming. And then, unfortunately, this is all I have time to do this, this week at home. Uh, like I said, if you're new, uh, videos will be a little thin. Got a lot of work ahead of me. And I'm just trying to fit in what I can when I'm here. So uh, hit that subscribe button if you guys haven't already. Hit a like for me as well. Leave a comment. Tell me what you guys think. Uh, uh, appreciate all your guys' support. Definitely means a lot to me. So but anyways, you guys, thanks for hanging out. Thank you for watching. Tell me what you think about the truck. I'll catch you guys on the next one.